Okay, today's daf is daf ayin vav. And uh, we are discussing, we're just going to start from daf ayin hey omid beis, and two lines from the bottom. Fascinating Gemara. I'm going to, and we're talking about the concept of, of psuadaka. That means in the male member, the Pusik says, let's just bring up that Pusik, la yavoy daka, krushavcha bakal Hashem. Somebody has his male member cut, or he has a uh, wound over there, right? It wasn't severed, but it was just a wound. Then he cannot be stay married to a Jewish woman. That's what the Torah says. So in now the Gemara, I'm just going to bring up basic, uh, basic anatomy over here. And this is uh, what the Gemara is trying to over, over here say, is that in the times of the Gemara, it's fascinating, there were two, two pipes over here. One that for the urine and one for the semen. And that's what, and, and uh, I guess nature changed from the time this Gemara was written. So listen what the Gemara says. Ahu Uvda, there was this story, the Hava Pumpadisa, that was in Pumpadisa. Istatim Gufsa de Shikhvazera, the pipe that's supposed to release semen got clogged. Maybe there was plaque there or something. And for this young man, it started, the semen started coming out uh, in, the, in the normal place where the urine comes out. So our baby, the son of Abaya said that he's not a Ptsua Daka because, because uh, at the end of the day, he's not missing anything. Here, I'm going to just let Sheldon in. Hi, Sheldon. Hi, Sheldon. Hi. Yes. So we just began the Gemara, Daf Ayin Hey Omid Beis. And, and basically what the Gemara has just said over here, that in the time of the Gemara, they had two, uh, uh, two, two uh, pipes going down in the male organ, one for urine and one for semen. And the, and the Gemara is discussing over here that there was this man that had the, the semen uh, uh, pipe was clogged. And therefore his, his semen came out where the urine came out. So Rabbi Bibari Bai wanna say that um, he is kosher. He's not a Pitsua Daka. In other words, the, the Pasuk says that if someone who's a Pitsua Daka, if he has a problem that he can't give uh, with the semen production, he cannot marry uh, a Jewish woman. So baby Barabai said, this person is kosher. He's not uh, included in that love and he's permitted to marry a Jewish woman. Omar Apapi, so Apapi said, Mishum Asi, because you came from Mumuloi, so Apapi said to baby Barabai, since you come from a place, a family that gets cut off, Amrisa Mili Mulaisa, you say words that should be cut off. In other words, you're poskening incorrectly. And the answer is that uh, he said, Bim koima levashla. If, if it comes out in the normal tract, if the semen comes out in the semen tract, then this semen can fertilize. Shulai bim koima, but if it doesn't come out in the semen tract, it comes out in the, in the urinary tract, loy mevashla, it would not be semen that could produce a child. And therefore, Rabbi, Rabbi Papi said that you got it wrong, that this person is not permitted to marry a Jewish woman. I, got, I explained before that evolution since the time that this was written in the Talmud has changed, that we have one track for both. Amar Rabbi Huda, Amar Shmuel. Rabbi Huda said in the name of Shmuel, Nikav Venistam. Fascinating. A guy had a hole. He had a hole. Now, that hole in the, in the, in the male organ would render him unfit to marry a Jewish woman. But here, Venistam, it naturally uh, got healed and it closed off. The end, so kol she'ilu nikre v'nikra apostle. We have to determine when he has an erection, right? Does it rip open again? The, can you, the hole come, does the hole reappear? Then he's apostle. He's invalid and he's not permitted to, um, to marry a Jewish woman. V'ilaf, but if the, the, the clothes was very, very uh, good, then kosher, then he's kosher. So that's what the Gemara says. Now, fascinating here. You have to go to a rabbi and have an erection in front of him, and he has to determine if the hole opens up or not. You'll see that in a moment. 
First of all, Havi Bey Rava. Rava was wondering on the Psak of Shmuel. Hegel, where exactly is this hole? Now, if we look at the, uh, at the, at the, at, at the, in the, uh, the diagram here, if the hole is from the bottom, you know, by the, the you know, lower than the, the corona, this certainly is not a problem. The hole, that wouldn't, that wouldn't invalidate because that certainly doesn't affect the semen coming out. And so the Gemara is going to say is if it's ready by the foreskin, let's say you have a, a puncture by the foreskin, that's also not a problem because even if you're missing the whole entire foreskin, that is, that, that, that's not going to affect anything. So the Gemara is going to say that the hole is somewhere on the corona. And that is the question. There, there, they have to determine: Does the hole open up when he when he has an erection? Ilema, so the says, "Hey, where's this hole?" Ilema lematame atara. If it's above, towards the foreskin, right? I feel a nichras nami. Even if the whole member foreskin came off in the front, it's it's a man's kosher. There's nothing wrong. He can still uh, produce a, a, a semen that can produce a child. Ella, the question is, if it's in the corona itself, then the question is that if you have a hole there, perhaps the hole, the causes that the semen doesn't ejaculate through the normal opening, it ejac- ejaculates through a hole, and it doesn't shoot out like an arrow. And if it's not shooting out like an arrow, then it's not going to impregnate any woman. If you have the hole, by the by the corona and it got closed off cold you have to determine she'ilu nikre when he has an erection the nikra and you can still the hole opens and widens you can still see the hole puzzle then he's invalidated be love kosher if not then the man is kosher so so now you go to the rabbi and a person has a hole there but he said it naturally healed so the rabbi has to determine um, if he's capable of going into, if he's capable, if he's supposed to be a Jew, he can marry a Jewish woman. So you have to have an erection from the rabbi. So Shalach Le Rava Berei the Rabbi Rabbi Yosef. So Rava, the son of Rabbi, sent the question to Rabbi Yosef. Yelamdenu Marabenu Heicha Avdinam. Teach me, Rabbi, how am I supposed to test this out on a person that I want to issue a psak? How do I make him have an erection in front of me? And release semen, ejaculate. Amale, so Rabbi Yosef gave him uh, a natural way to do it. First of all, he said, My sinin nahama chamima desari. You bring uh, hot bread made of barley, hot barley bread. Umanichin le ape bukra, and you put it by the, the anus, by the backside, by the hole, right beneath his testes. Umikra, and you'll see that he'll be able to release semen. The chazina le, and then you determine. If the hole opens up while he's releasing semen, Omer Abaya. So that's a funny way, natural way to do it. Uh, um, Omer Abaya, Abaya said, "Question: Is that the way you get an erection for something?" Atikuli Alma Yaakov Avina Havai. Is everybody like Yaakov? The Ksidbe Koichi Vreishis Oni. Yaakov was seventy-two when he got married, seventy-four when he got married, and he never saw semen in his life. He never had a nocturnal emission. In his entire life. And Yaakov himself testifies that when he calls Reuven his son the first time he ever ejaculated. In his entire life, he never saw semen. So, so nobody is that holy like Yaakov that you have to figure out a natural way to have him to ejaculate. El Amar Baya Bayas is a very much simpler method. You bring in front of him. Uh, women's colored clothing of women that he doesn't recognize, but women seductive clothing, and that will bring him into into uh, thoughts that will enable him to get an, uh, an erection and ejaculate. Amar Ava, so Rava said to Abaya, what kind of uh, idea are you giving? After Kuli Amar Bazile Hagiladihu, is everybody like the the firm person in Tanakh called Bazile Hagiladi, and he's a person in Tanakh. That had a appetite for women, and he he was constantly with a lot of women, and therefore the pasuk says that he aged very quickly. He aged very quickly, you know. And the Gemara says that a person who doesn't uh, is not is not involved in these things. He's, he ages gracefully, in uh, and and he doesn't lose his 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 uh, functions uh, at a young age. So he says, is everybody like that person that as soon as they see women's clothing, they're going to ejaculate? 
Ella, he says, Rabbi says, you got to do what we did before. If you want somebody to ejaculate, you have to do with the bread situation and uh, you get him to ejaculate that, that way. But basically, you still need the rabbi to determine if that hole will open up. Tana Rabbanim. To a rabbi is taught, Nikav, if a person has a hole, puzzle. If it's if it's a real hole and there's no, it's not you know repaired, then it's puzzle. Then the person's not Jewish. It's not not Jewish. Not the sense not Jewish. He can't marry a Jewish woman. If Neishu says because because the semen goes out through that hole and therefore he, he can't impregnate the woman. Nistam if it got uh, sealed, kosher it's kosher. If Neishu is murder because he can now you know impregnate a woman. That's a possible uh, psul, something that invalidates a person then some, uh, that can turn around. And if he's healed, naturally, he can become a kosher Jew again. What does this mean? This is a case. That means there are some other cases that healing is not going to work. So that has to do with Hilchas Trefus. A, a, a membrane, if the, person, if the animal has a hole in its lungs, and somehow there was a, another, uh, another me- uh, membrane growing over because of a wound somewhere else on the lung and it somehow clogged the hole, that's not a good, that's not a good clog because uh, that hole will eventually open up in the animal and the animal will die. So it's a trafa animal. But here, it's possible to have a, a hole in the male membrane by the corona and then have it heal. Sholachle Rav Idi Bar Oven Labaya. Rav Idi Bar Oven Labaya. He, it's a fascinating, I mean, this is unbelievable. The Gemara discusses surgery over here. And here the Gemara says, Hey, Avdinen, what do I do with a person that uh, has a hole and we want to surgically repair the hole there so he can be a, a normal Jew? So he said like this Mesin in Sa'arta, you bring a, a piece of barley that's very sharp edges and you go by the hole, Umasartinele, and you lacerate the hole to make it bleed. Once you have it bleeding, that will cause something. Umasin in tarba, you bring fats of an animal, vashayfinu, and then you, you smear it at the, at the hole. It's bleeding hole and you're smearing fats of an animal. Umasin in shumsha gamla, shumsha no gamla, you bring an ant, umanachtinele, uh, uh, you put it by that fats, upaskinule liration, you cut the ant's head off. So now the ant's head is somewhere melted into the wax, into the fats that's plugging up the hole that's bleeding. And, and as the, what's basically going to happen, as the hole is going to repair itself, the, the head is going to so slowly dissolve. And eventually the hole is going to repair itself and smoothly close. So first the Gemara says, Vidafkas Arta. When you make the initial lacerations, you should do it with a barley. Avaparzala, but if you use a piece of metal like a, a knife, uh, so then they, they had a problem. They didn't have sterilization. So Mizrah Zarif, then it will cause uh, um, inflammation. So that that so here the Gemara in, in a nutshell, in a few lines, described procedures in a surgery. Mahanimi Likatan, and only the, the surgery really only works if you have a small hole. Avogadol, but if you have a large hole, mikpule mikpal, it's not going to work. It's never, it's 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 too big, so it's gonna, uh, the surgery is going to be, um, it's going to be peeled, you know. So it's that's that's not going to work. Amar Rabba Baravuna, hamatel mayim shteim akomos. Somebody who has, who again, they used to have two pipes, one for the sperm and one for urine. So somebody who urinates out of both tracts, yeah. So he has two tracts and he's urinating from both. So then possible, because obviously there's something wrong. He has a hole there, and, and therefore in the tract itself, that causes leakage from the urine from where it's supposed to go out, and now it goes out in two, two tracts. On the Rava, Rava said, the halach is not like this Rava, he's the son of Rav Huna, and not like his father. You know, Rava said a halacha, and we're just not paskening like that, and his father, we're also not going to pasken like the thing that the son said, we just explained it. Abba, what did the Rav Huna say? That we're not going to paskin like him. Dhamma Rav Huna, Rav Huna says, Noshin An unbelievable thing. He said that women who live with each other like a, a, like a male and a female. So they, they have this type of uh, relationship that they're rubbing their, 
they're, they're, they're rubbing their, their organs together. So they are, so those women apostle like a Zoyna to marry a Koyin. A, go, a Koyin uh, cannot marry a Zoyna. So this is considered a, a Znus. So we don't paskin like that. Even according to Rabbi Loza, says, If a male came to a female, they weren't married, they just had an affair with each other, they were just living, then that woman is a zona, can never marry a kite. But that was a male doing it to a female. But another female doing it to another female, that's not going to... Uh, invalidate her from marrying a coin. That's just a breakage of normalcy, but it doesn't invalidate her from marrying a coin. Next, Gemara. Mishnah says, Petsua daka means again, if you have a cut or a, a, a hole or laceration or a, a severance of the member. So a person like that, a Jewish person like that, Mutarim Bikyarish Mushukhrares. She's permitted to marry a ger and uh, and, a, a, and a and a maid that became free. So a Jewish uh, a, a goyish maid that became a uh, convert. They ain't in a suris elam They cannot marry just a Jewish normal Jewish woman. They can't marry, but a converted goy they could marry. They can't marry a Jewish woman. But a Giyaris is not called Kahal Hashem. It's not called the, the congregation of Hashem. She just converted from another religion to a Jew. Then the Kushchafcha could marry that person. So Boyim and A. Rav Sheshis. Rav Sheshis asked the question, what is this essence of a Petsua Daka? Petsua Daka Koyim. A Petsua Daka, that's a Koyim. Does he lose his name Koyim? So therefore, if he loses his name Koyim, right, then he can marry a, a, a a Gioris, he can marry a, even a Grusha. He just doesn't lose, lost his whole Kedusha because his male member fell off, uh, got cut. So the question is, Mahu Bigioris Mushukhreris. Can this Koyan marry a Gioris, you know, converted, or, or, the, or, or a Shifcha that became free? In other words, a normal Koyan can't marry a Gioris. Why? Because a Gioris is a Zona, considered to be a Zona. But here, since he's a Pitsuadaka Koyan, so maybe. He lost his kedusha, and he's not really a kohen anymore. Big kedusha say kohen is a pitzua daka kohen still remain a kohen. The aser and aser on this woman, or dilma la big kedusha kohen, or maybe he doesn't remain holy. Vishari and he's permitted to marry this uh, this gioris. Amar le Rav Sheshis, Rav Sheshis said tenesua, tenesua. We learned it. It's a brisa. The brisa says pitzua daka Yisrael, a pitzua daka of a Jewish guy. So he's a Petsudaka, so he can't marry a Jewish woman, Mutter Benesina. He's allowed to marry a Goyesha, the Gemara says, a Goyesha, a, 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 we're not allowed to marry somebody from the seven nations. So the Gemara says that if somebody from the seven nations converts, we're not allowed to marry it because uh, Yisrael is not allowed to marry. Even if a Goy from the seven nations converts, you're not allowed to marry that, that, that Jew. Uh, that converted Goy, but a Petsuadaka who is permitted to marry the Nasina. Now, so we see that even a Jew that becomes a Petsuadaka loses his Kedusha Yisrael. If you want to say a Petsuadaka remains a holy person, Ikri Khan Loi Tishatin Bam. The Torah says you're not allowed to marry a, a, a somebody from the seven nations. So, how does this how is this allowed? A Petsuadaka Yisrael marrying Nasina. Amar Rava, Rava explained. We read the pasuk wrong. At the Hasam Mishim Kedusha, Velav Kedusha. Who is it? This question is because he has his holiness, and and or is a Petsuadaka a holy person, not a holy person? No, we, we read the pasuk wrong. Loy Teschatin Bam means you're not allowed to marry a goy from the seven nations. But if it becomes a ger, you are permitted to marry from the seven nations. And why can't you marry a goy from the seven nations? Because those goyim. From those seven nations were very uh, connected to idolatry. And what was the Torah concerned about? Dilma Moile Ben, if you're going to uh, marry this guy, you're going to have a son, but also Palach Lavai Dezara, and that son is going to worship Lavai Dezara. And Hani Milu, but the Torah was talking about Big Gayusan, when they're a guy. Kima Gairu, when they become uh, converted, be Yisrael Shari, really, Minatara, any Jew can marry a, a, a Nasini, anybody from the seven nations. Rabbanan, who the Gazerbu, Rabbanan said, don't marry them. 
When did the Rabbinin make this Gezerah? Only those people, those Jews that can, are capable to procreate. Because if you allow them to marry when they're, when they're converted, they may come to marry them when they're Goyim. But this guy, the Labar Ailude, he can never procreate, right? So Loidos Rabbanim, the Rabbanim did not invalidate him from marrying this, this Nasina. So really, really, uh, he does have the Kedusha on him. The Kedusha was not lost. That was the, the proof. That was the, the refu- refutation. So if that's the case, says the Gemara, so that means that Midaraisa, anybody can marry. A, somebody from the seven nations, but midrabanan you can't. Elam ata that's the case. Mamzer the bar olide a mamzer is capable of procreating. Hachinami the aser would you say that they cannot marry a a a a a Jewish person from the seven nations? Well, to now we learned in the Mishnah mamzer unesinim mutarm lavi zebzeh a mamzer could marry somebody from the seven nations, but why not? If the uh, why did the Rabbana make a gzera a mamzer who's capable to procreate that he should not marry a nasan? So you must you learned it all wrong. Ella says the Gemara, one more try. Ki bekshem. When Rabbanim said normal Jews can't marry a somebody from the seven nations who's a ger, because you can marry anybody. Why are you choosing this woman? But somebody who's a pasal, like a mamzer or a psuadaka, since it's hard to find a shidduch for them. They permitted them to marry somebody from the seven nations who becomes a ger. So the way the Gemara l- lets you believe right now is that somebody from the seven nations who becomes a ger, you could technically marry them. It's only Midrat Bonan, you can't marry them. So Rav said, I got it all wrong. The Torah wouldn't say don't marry them when they, and, and it's talking about when they're goyim because there's no such a thing of a marriage to a goy. So the Torah is only talking about when uh, when they become a ger and the Torah is the saying, despite them coming becoming a ger, you can't marry them. Yeah, and therefore the skyru is luhuchasus. When they become a ger, they that's called marrying them. And therefore, when the when we just learned in a brisa to conclude, a pitzua daka could marry somebody from the seven nations because the pitzua daka is not a, really a Jew. He's not like Kahal Hashem anymore. He lost his holiness as a Jew. And therefore, he could marry somebody from the seven nations. And, and same would hold true that a Koyan who's a Petsuadaka, he loses his kahuna. It flies away, his Kedusha, and he's permitted to marry a Ger or Meshukra, even though they're Zaina. And they're not prohibited. They're not prohibited for a regular Koyan. This Koyan, who's a Petsuadaka Koyan, lost his Kedusha. Master of Rabbi Yaisa. Rabbi Yaisa said, you just told me that the word Loitishaten cannot apply to a Goyish woman. The Chumash wouldn't use the word chasna, you got married to a Goyish woman. Is that so? The Pasuk says in Malachim, by Yishatein Shlomo Esbas Pari Melech Mitzrayim. Shlomo married the daughter of, 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 of Pari, the king of Mitzrayim, and he married her. And she presumably, she was a Goy. And the Torah, the, the, the Tanakh describes that he got married, like a chasan. So the Gemara says, no, Giyuri Giyari. He converted her first. So wait a second. So the Gemara says, what do you mean? He married a converted Mitzri? There was no such a thing of a guy converting during the times of David and times of Shlomim because Jews had it so good that they, they questioned any guy that wanted to become a ger, they questioned their motive. Maybe they didn't have true motives. So how would Shlomim marry a ger? So the Gemara says, really, a regular person we don't accept because because we presume his motive was to join the Jewish people because we're like joining you're at the table of the kings. Every Jew was so rich back then. It, 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 it was understandable why a goy would become a, want to become a ger, and therefore we didn't accept them. But this was the daughter of king of Mitzrayim, so she didn't really need to, she must have had true motives. That's we got on the base. Ha, like she didn't need to, become a ger, she had the, she came from a table of kings. So therefore her motive was totally pure and therefore she became a ger. And that's why the, the Tanakh uses the expression that Shlomo married her. So now the question is, but how could you marry a Mitzri? Even if she converted, if you look at the Psukim that I'm quoting over here, the Pasuk says, right over here, the Pasuk says, uh, uh, you should not, 
you know, repulse a mitzri, but Here's the Pasuk. It says only the third generation Mitzri can come into Kahal Hashem, not the first generation. A first generation Egyptian that becomes converted, you can't marry her. So that's the question. How was Shlomo allowed to marry? This was a first generation Mitzri. And Shlomo was not allowed to marry that woman. Would you say? The ones that the Egyptians that existed at the time the Chumash was written, the time of Yitzhiz Mitzrayim, they were all lost and destroyed in the Tenmakos and drowned in the days of Paroi. And when the Torah says, don't, don't be careful not to marry a Mitzri first generation, is we're talking about those Mitzris that joined the Jewish people as they sojourned in the desert. But really the Mitzrayim, the, the Mitzrayim that existed, you know, during the time of Yitzhiz Mitzrayim totally disappeared and it was wiped off the face of the earth. So therefore, the, 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 we're saying that Shlomo married the daughter of the Mitzri, the daughter of Paspare, that's not really the original Egyptian. Or oh, is that true? Well, Tanya, we learned in Ebraisa, Om Rabbi Huda, Rabbi Huda said, Minyamin Ger Mitzri Hoyali. Minyamin was a Ger Mitzri, Chove Mitamide Rabbi Kiva. He was a student from the Tamide Rabbi Kiva. You remember that the Tamide Rabbi Kiva all died out during Sefir Soimer, except Rabbi Huda learned by Rabbi Kiva. And he had another classmate called the Minyamin, and he was Ger Mitzri. He was a Ger Mitzri. And he said, Ani Mitzri Rishin, I'm a first generation convert, Venusasi Mitzri Shoshana, and I married a first generation convert. Asi Bli, I'm going to marry more of my son, Mitzri Shnia, to the second generation convert. Kidei Shei Ben Bini Roy Love so that I'll have a third generation a grandson, and he will be permitted to marry a Jewish woman. So we see that even in the time of Rabbi Akiva, Egyptians were not allowed to marry Jews. So then how does the Chumit, the Tanakh say that Shlomo married an Egyptian woman? Amar Papa, Rapapa said, really we, got, we learned the Pasuk wrong. And now Shlomo Leiki Ben Esif will stand around and ask questions from Shlomo Melech. Shlomo Loino Savmidi, he never really married these women. The Pasuk says, Min Hagoyim Hashom Hashem Obnei Yisrael, Yisuboi Behem Behem Leivoi Bechem, God said, don't, you know, don't marry these women or don't have anything to do with these women because they, they can seduce your heart to serve after their God. And, and it's rebuking Shlomo, but nevertheless, Shlomo clung to them and, and for love. So it's rebuke to Shlomo. But the, if you look closely, the Torah says, the Tanakh says he only did it for love, but he never really married them. So the but, but the El Akasha, but then you have difficult, but there's another Pasuk says Vayis He did he did marry the Mitzri. It wasn't just a friendship, a platonic relationship. It says Vayis he married there. So not really. Because he loved them too much, it was platonic, but he, he loved them too much. As if he married them. So you can say that by all his thousand wives that he had, he wasn't really married to them. But he was too much, uh, they were too close friends that the Tanakh uh, considers it as if he married, but he didn't really marry them. And that solves all the problems. Amalei Ravina Ravashi. Ravina said to Rav Ashi, let's examine this idea of a Krush Shavcha marrying a Goy. Does they lose, can they marry somebody from the seven nations? Well, Nantanan, in our mission, we learn, Pitsu Daka Krush Shavcha. She's only merely, uh, uh, permitted to marry a regular ger, regular convert, but somebody from the seven nations, Asiri. They're not permitted. So we see that a Krush, uh, a Petsua Daka still remains a holy Jew. He cannot marry somebody from the seven nations because our mission only says a normal convert he could marry, but not somebody from the seven nations. So that was Ravina's proof to Ravashi. Amalei, so Rav Rashi responded, according to your reasoning, I could have the, the an inference from the Sefer of the Mishnah that refutes that. Eino Sefer, let's see this end of the Mishnah. The Eino Asura Elam Alove Bakal. They can't marry somebody from only, uh, they could only marry somebody, uh, they can't marry only a Jew. They're not permitted to marry a Jew. Ha Benesina Shuri, but somebody from the seven nations, they are permitted to marry. So the Mishnah can, can swing either be- way. At the end of the Mishnah, it seems that they could marry somebody from the seven nations, that they lost their holiness. And the beginning of the Mishnah says they're prohibited to marry somebody from the seven nations, so they still maintain their holiness. From a Mishnah, you can't derive any halacha.
New Gemar, New Mishnah. The Pasuk says right over here that an Amoinis, a Ger that from the nation of Amoin and Moyev, they're now allowed to marry a Jew forever, right? But that's only the males, that if a male Amoini or a male Moyavi, a female that converts, they're permitted to marry a Jew. Gamber Asiri. And the Pasuk says, because they were so cruel that when we were asked them for bread and water, they didn't provide us with bread and water as we were making our way towards the, the Israel. They can never be permitted to marry a Jew. The, the females from them, they're permitted to marry uh, right away. We discussed that. A Mitzri has a limit for three generations. Then they're permitted to marry Jews. But this applies to not a Mitzri, both a Mitzri and a female Mitzri that becomes a Ger. Unlike an Amoy and a Moyavi, the females are permitted to marry Jew right away. A Mitzri or a Mitzris cannot marry a Jew until three generations. Rabbi Shimon matas nekevis miyad. Rabbi Shimon says a Mitzri and Adomi could marry, uh, uh, the females are permitted to marry Jews right away. Amar Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Shimon says, and I have a logical way to figure this out. If you look at the Amoin and Moyav, the, the males are forever for, forbidden. Hitteras nekevis miyad. But the Tchumish says that the, the females are permitted right away. Mokum Shalit also has his harma al Shalish Droiris, but in an area like a Mitzri, where the limit is till three generations, Ainidin, certainly we should not there's in a Kavis Miyad. Right away, we should allow the females to be permitted to marry Jewish Jew, Jewish men. So that's where Rab Shimon's opinion is. Amrullah, so the Chachamim answered Rab Shimon, and he said, Im halacha, if you're saying this, that you have a tradition, Nakaba will accept it. That what? That the uh, Mitzri Nekeva is permitted right away. Bim Ladin, but if you're figuring this out on your own through a Kalvachoyma, yes, Chuba, we have a refutation. Omalahem, Loi, Ki, you don't have a refutation, but nevertheless, Ki Aloch I have a, a tradition that a Mitzris is permitted right away. Although a Mitzri has to wait three generations, a female Mitzris can marry a Jew right away. Amoin Omayavi, forever they never can marry, but the Nekevas are permitted. So the Gemara begins and says, and we'll start another minute or two, and then we'll stop. hani mili. How do I know this? How do I know what? How do I know that the women of Amay Namoyev are not permitted are permitted to be married Jews right away? If you look at the Chumash, it says Leyove Amayani by Halashem. It would seem to imply both male and female. If they convert, they can never marry a Jewish woman so, or a Jewish man. How do you know it's limited to only the males? Amr Rabbi Yechanan, the Amakra, the Pasik describes a story. The Quraysh Sha'o, when David Amela took the challenge of, of, of going to battle against this uh, Goliath, this giant, Sha'o, the Quraysh Sha'o is David Yoytse Likra Saplishti. He was going to battle to this Goliath, the Plishti. Omar El Abner Sar Hatzavo, uh, so uh, Sha'o Hamelech said to Abner, his general, Ben Nizahanar. Avner. Who is his father, Avner? He looks, he looks familiar. Who is his father? Vayoma Avner, and Avner, his general, told Chol, I swear to you, Hamelech, I have no idea who he is. So now that exchange seems uh, ridiculous. Did he not know him? That David used to play the, uh, his harp to Shaul Hamelech. Shaul suffered from, from the the moments of depression, and David was his, you know, instrument player that brought him back into a good mood. So, and he and he became very close to David that he would carry his bags, so to speak. So, how did he not know who he was? Elos, so what was David and Mela, What was Shaul asking his general? Avua Shaul. He was asking who is his father. So, who is his father? I know David, but I don't know who's his dad. His da- father is Yishai. He did not know his father. Yishai was a famous person in the time of Shola Melech, and he always had an entourage of people whenever he walked. So certainly, certainly, uh, certainly he knew who he, who he was. So why is he questioning who his father was? What's the problem over here? Whenever he went, he always had a entourage of people with him. He was very famous. 
So this was the question of Shaul. Does he come from Peretz, the part of David Melech's son called Peretz, or from the family Mizerach Asi? Or does he come from the family of David? Does David come from Shevi Yehuda, from the Zerach part of the family? There are two fam- the, uh, Yehuda had two children called Peretz and Zerach. So which one did, he, did David come from? In the Peretz Asi, if he comes from Peretz, Malka Haba, then I suspect that David HaMelech is going to take me over one day as king. And Shamelech Peretz Lasses Derech Veim Amachem The word Peretz means a, a, a king can break through and do what he wants and nobody can object. So Ime Zerach Asi, does David come from Zerach? Then I'm not so concerned about him. Chashiva Baal Maho. Chashiva Baal He's just going to be a Chashiv person. And therefore... I'm not nervous that he's going to take over the king. So we're in the middle of a story over here, and we'll stop over here. But David, uh, the Shaul Melech sees this young kid who took the courage to fight against this great giant Goliath, and Shaul senses something that one day this, this kid is going to take over him as king. And he's very nervous about that. So he asked, who is his family? Where is he coming from? And we'll see how this relates to Amin and Moev tomorrow, Bezos Okay. Shukran. Okay. Fascinating Gemara about surgery and about uh, about uh, the anatomy and everything.